Hello, Link's Outdoors here, and I've got a gear list video for you today. I have an upcoming Continental Divide Trail through heck attempt in just about a month. So my current start date for that is May 1st. I've got my flights all booked. I spent a lot of time and money and energy coming up with what I want to take along with me for this big trip. So in this video, I want to share those choices with you. This video is really two parts. The first part of it is pretty much rapid fire, really straight to the point, showing you just each piece of gear on this table. And the second half is much more indirect. It is a lot more of me playing outside with the gear, setting it up, showing how I like to do things and why and that kind of stuff. So if, if you're not really interested in a long video, I'd recommend the first 15 minutes or thereabouts of it. I'll put timestamps in the description. You can check out those choices. I'll put a link for my lighter packs profile for this trip in the description as well. So you can kind of fast forward to any part that you're interested in. And the second part, unfortunately, my microphone had some issues outside and it was a little bit breezy. So that might annoy you as well. So my advice would be just tune in for whatever part interests you the most. So with that being said, let's get right to it. This is a Superior Wilderness Designs Ultralight Long Haul in the 100 weight ultra fabric. Thermarest Neo Air x Lite NLX Wide Width. Sleeping that. Durston X Mid Pro One Person Ultralight Trekking Pole Tent. Western Mountaineering 20 Degree Alpen Light Sleeping Bag. My backpack kit currently includes two waist belt pockets, two shoulder strap pockets, umbrella attachments for the sun and rain umbrella. This is about 30 inches of Gossamer Gear Thin Light Pad that gets folded up. Goes into that sleeve right there for back cushion. So multi-purpose, I can take that out midday. And then I also plan on using that X-Ped Snozzle as a pack liner and pad inflator. For my kitchen setup, I have a Hilltop Packs 15 liter dynamic composite fabric food bag, about 60 feet of Zingit bear throw rope, Hilltop Packs rock sack, Apex Giant toggle, Apex Giant tiny aluminum carabiner, Tokes long handled titanium spork with the polished head. MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe 2 with a DCF stuff sack. That's an MSR canister stand. Vargo Bot 1000 milliliter titanium pot. In this little Ziploc, I keep a small thing of Dr. Bronner's soap, small sponge, and a backup big lighter. For hydration, I've got two one liter smart water bottles, Sawyer squeeze, plastic coupler, and a three liter Canuck bladder that has a micro carabiner and very lightweight cord tied to the top. Z Packs duplex ground sheet. Four MSR Groundhog Steaks, four light duty carbon fiber glow in the dark steaks, Hilltop Pack Steak Bag, a few small coils of the Zingit line for guy outs and clotheslines and other miscellaneous uses. My pillow is just the inside inflatable part of the Nemo Philo Elite XL pillow. And incorporated with that, I also use my buff, which is Don't Shoot Me Orange, with reflective strip as a pillowcase. And also this is a pad strap that came with one of my enlightened equipment quilts that I use to keep the pillow in place. My rain jacket is a Mott Bell Versalite. It's a Gore-Tex rain jacket with pit zips and waterproof zippers. Rain pants are the matching... Mont Bell Versalite rain pants. 
My warm jacket is an Enlightened Equipment Torrid. I am planning on starting at least with a separate wind jacket. This is the Montbell Tachyon. For a warm hat, I've got the z Pax Possum Down hat. And for lightweight gloves, I have some matching z Pax Possum Down gloves. This is a Senshi Lark Alpha Direct hoodie. This is a far point pair of Alpha Direct pants. Farpoint Alpha Direct Sleep Socks. One spare pair of Darn Tough Quarter Cut Socks. One spare pair of Outdoor Research Boxer Shorts. For my ditty bag, I'm using a Matador Flat Pack, completely waterproof with a waterproof zipper. For a wallet, I've got a small DCF Hartford Gear Co. Earplugs. Classic Swiss Army knife, bamboo toothbrush with a silicone cover to try to keep it a little less gross. I have sleep apnea, so I have to bring an oral appliance mouth guard. This is my repair kit. I store it all in that Hyperlite Mountain Gear DCF stuff sack. They're going over really fast. There's some zip ties, super glue, duct tape, a patch kit, and a pad repair kit, DCF repair. Safety pins, a bunch of Luco tape wrapped around a sewing kit, and a spare Bic lighter. My first aid kit, those cylinders up in the top are various medications, painkillers, personal medications. I plan to carry some Imodium for the desert, Benadryl, various band-aids, and smaller cut care alcohol pads, tiny little tick remover, and I store all of that in that Z-Pax DCF stuff sack. For my electronics, I have the new version of the Nightcore NU25 with a custom shot cord. Garmin Mini InReach 2, Nightcore 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank. I have two USB-C to C charging cables a USB adapter, a watch adapter, dual port anchor wall charger. For headphones, I have some Shure brand 215 earbuds and an adapter for a USB-C port. All of my cables go into that small Z-Pax DCF bag and all of those electronics fit into this Hilltop Packs dry sack. I'm planning to try out a massage ball for the first time. So that's a cork Rology massage ball. Polarized shady ray sunglasses with a great warranty. This is my watch that I wear every day. It's a Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus. And for the first time ever, I plan on trying out a sun umbrella. For consumables, I have some SBF chapstick, body glide to prevent chafing, sunscreen stick. I plan on using, when I can, chewable toothpaste tablets. Hand sanitizer, toilet paper, trowel. And I don't normally use any kind of wet wipes, but I think that I might want to in the desert, so I plan on sending myself some occasional wet wipes. For my worn clothing, I've got an icebreaker, tech light, merino wool t-shirt, some Patagonia Nine Trails shorts with the liner cut out. I prefer traditional underwear, a buff UV resistant sweatband, one pair of smart wool merino wool boxer shorts. For footwear, the last few years I've been using the Ultra Lone Peaks with pretty good success pair of darn tough quarter length light cushion socks, some electrifyingly shocking dirty girl trail running gaiters. I don't mess around with the sun in the beginning of the season after a New England winter. I know I'm going to get cooked if I'm not careful. So I have a lot of sun stuff. This is an outdoor research echo sun hoodie, UPF 50. 
This is a Sunday collapsible full brim hat. Same sunglasses. Outdoor Research Venti sun gloves. And the same silver shadow umbrella in addition to an outdoor research bug net. This is my snow safety equipment. For winter traction, I plan on using these black diamond distance spikes. They work very well with trail running shoes because they use a soft shell fabric over the top of the thin trail running top of the shoe, but still have a pretty aggressive spike plate and chain underfoot. For trekking poles in general, which I use even on the easy stuff except for paved road walks, I've got a pair of Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Cork WR, which stands for Whip It Ready Trekking Poles. On that note, I've been a part of some online debates in the forums and things, but this is my current plan. This is a Black Diamond Whip It. It's a removable ads for trekking poles that they make that are specifically reinforced for it, which is used for self-arresting. So these were designed for primarily ski mountaineers and alpine touring skiers to have a device to be able to self-arrest on steep snow that they plan to ski on. This is not intended for climbing use. I'm an avid ice climber. I'm an instructor with the American Mountain Guide Association and have been for almost 10 years. I lead climb ice up to WI3 for the difficulty grades. I have seven ice axes in the basement and at least five pairs of crampons and three pairs of mountaineering boots. If I wanted something really heavy duty, I've got it. But for long distance backpacking, I feel comfortable because I've had professional training on how to self arrest and I'm comfortable using a whip it as opposed to a traditional ice axe. On that note, please don't assume that just because you've got an ice axe that you are safe. If you've never taken time to professionally train with it, I highly recommend that. I think carrying an ice axe is one of the false sense of securities that people have, just like their bear spray. If you've never actually taken the time to practice with it, that doesn't mean it's going to save you in that really scary situation that I hope does not ever happen to you. End rant. For anybody that's interested in this and hasn't seen it before, the way that it works is you need to have whip it ready trekking poles, which Black Diamond makes. So they have a steel thread that goes down inside the handle. And that receives this steel quarter 20 bolts. And then they have a one piece aluminum attachment point with a tight ratcheting system that has a positive clicks that you tension this bolt down inside of the trekking pole. It's very light. It weighs less than three ounces. And even your very lightweight um, ice axes are above the six ounce range, typically. Here's what the pack looks like all loaded up with all of that equipment without food in it, just the food bag. Here we are in pretty much full sun mode. I have sunscreen for my legs and absolutely need to if they're getting hooked. I could suffer by wearing my rain pants to at least get them out of the sun. But I've got my sun gloves, my sun hoodie, full brim hat, sunglasses, and as you can obviously see, sun umbrella. Like I said before, this is going to be a learn as I go kind of experience. I haven't spent a lot of time in shadeless environments where people have issues with the wind with these umbrellas. We'll see. I'm very cool and adaptable. If things don't work, I'll switch them. All right, we're back to March in New England dressed. And what I want to do is show you how I packed my pack, and then while I'm out here, I'll get some of my kits set up so you can see what my current plan is for making all this work. All right, so in my 50 liter pack on the outsides, 
in this front right pocket, I oftentimes will have chopstick, things of that nature. I typically like to have my phone in this pocket right here. On my right side, well, let me show you one of the things I love about this pack. One of the things I love about this pack is because these pockets are so huge, they're real pockets for your water bottle. I feel like that's every every single pack company says, you know, water bottle pockets that you can reach while you wear it. It's like so many packs I've tried, I can't get to them. Maybe it's just me. But with this pack, I can easily get to my water bottle. So I keep the main one with the sport cap on my right hand side. We're going to just explode as we go. So one liter primary drinking bottle. I want to keep that one clean. My backup bottle. On this right here, I carry my Canuck water blast. This is for making things much faster to fill up and filter. And I have this little cord and carabiner on here. And the reason for that is so I can set it up as a gravity hang with the regular setup plus just a coupler. I'll show you what that looks like. Garmin inReach 2, not very far away. I, for fun, like to keep a Garmin Temp, it's called, or Tempe, however they pronounce it. But it's just a Bluetooth thermometer that goes to my Garmin watch. And it's kind of fun because it keeps track of the hottest and coldest parts of the day. It gets messed up when it gets direct sunlight, but at least at night I like to know how cold it got. So it does a good job of that. On the outside of my pack, I first have access to my ditty bag. So what I do with this is I it doesn't have any sewn seams on the bottom or the sides. They're, they're laser welded. So what I do is I put it in this way so the zipper is down. And the hope is that water won't really get in here much. This is a huge pack. If I need to put this inside, I totally can. But I keep that outside for fast access. I have no idea how much I'll really use this, the massage ball, but it's out here right now. Toilet paper, trowel hand sanitizer kit and steak bag. So that's everything on the, oh. This front right hip belt pocket I use almost exclusively for snacks. So this one, it's kind of a unique feature. It's huge and it doesn't have a zipper. It just has a fold over top. This side, I, I keep my headlamp. And I like to keep some cordage there just for fast access. That's for all sorts of things. Close the lines, guy out points, you name it. All right, moving on to the main body of the pack. I keep my tent near the top. That way, if I have to take it out because it's wet, I can get some sun on it partway through the day. Or if I have to set up in the rain, it's already up there. I get up first before I take the other things out that might already not be wet or to put them into a dry place. On that note, I try to keep my at least my raincoat towards the top. Next is my bag kit for in case I need to get more snacks or to pack this up during a, a resupply. Ground sheet, I don't know where that'll live. Probably either towards the top or maybe even in this mesh pocket. And that's everything that I have above my, my pack liner. So everything else I have tucked into a waterproof dry bag. So that includes my clothing bag. my warm puffy jacket, my sleeping mat, that's everything from the pack. This is what I use as my current pack liner. It's very light. It's less than two and a half ounces and it's a huge inflator bag. And I have a 3D printed adapter that fits this that goes to my new air sleeping mat. So that's my current plan. If this is too much of a pain, I may just switch to an aluminum bag and send this out. Time will tell. And then lastly, I have my sleeping bag in a, I think this is a Z-Pax medium large size dry bag. And part of my sleep kit 
I use my buff for all sorts of things, but I do try to keep it relatively clean because I use it as part of my sleep system when I can, and a pad strap and a pillow. So that's everything that goes into my pack and more or less how I pack it. So if you're still with me, I'm gonna just kind of play around with gear while I'm out here. Because you're enjoying a nice day. And I'll kind of set things up and go over them in a quick fashion. All right, this isn't a video on how to set up this tent, but I figure maybe I'll just fast forward. All right, there we go, home sweet home. So this is my brand new Z-Pax duplex brown sheet. The duplex is a two-person tent. This is just a one-person tent. This is the Thurston X Mid Pro 1. But the reason that I got the larger size was because a lot of people seem to really enjoy cowboy camping on the Continental Divide Trail as well as the Pacific Crest Trail. And here in bugly, humid, rain-prone New England, uh, we, it's not something we do very often, at least I, I don't. So I wanted to bring this along to give myself the ability to kind of explode things out and maybe cowboy camp on top of this, but also use it to protect the, the floor on the inside. So what my plan for that is, it's a little too wide this way. Got the ground cloth underneath. Next step, I blow up my air mat. Here's my sleeping bag. It's a full mummy bag, Western Mountaineering, Alpen Light, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 850 filled down. Very good quality bag. I tend to like to put all of my setup equipment all inside my stuff sack so I know right where it is the next morning. I use this little piece of shock cord here to help keep my sleeping mat all together. But I also like to take my tent uh, stuff sack, any unused stakes, and I put all of this in here. And I typically put this down somewhere by the For my pillow, I start off with the with my new pillow elite luxury. There you go. A normal size buff works actually really well as a pillowcase. Pad strap goes like that through there, close this up. A lot of warm layers sleep in, that I can sleep in at night. I prefer just to sleep in a pair of boxer shorts if my system allows. I have a lot of layers I can sleep in, like that's the direct stuff. So I typically will try to use my nice poofy Torrid. That is a nice luxury backpacking pillow that stays in place with the pad strap. Totally worth it. I sleep so much better with this. This bag will go inside somewhere. Same with the raincoat, if there's any chance of rain. Food bag will not go in the tent with me. I'm used to New England camping. I always put this in a tree because there's trees everywhere that I go. Um, I think my plan is for the non-grizzly bear areas is to keep this in the vestibule. I'll put it in a tree when I can. I'm used to hanging it anyway. But this will be a bit of a new experience for me, so for now. Near me, but not in my tent. I don't think I'll ever do that.
All right, let's do a quick tour. All right, starting off with my beloved doggos, Remington, the big 105 pound Ridgeback, and that's little Zara. Let me just turned six a couple days ago. Zara's one and a half. Back to here. If you don't like dogs in your gear videos, you're on the wrong channel. Here we go, all laid out. Nice big vestibule to tuck your pack and your shoes out of the way. Gigundo pillow with pad strap to stay in place. Keep my headlamp and uh, toilet paper kit up there. Ditty bag usually by my head. That's where I keep my mouth guard as well. Uh, I need that for some sleep apnea. I've added this little closure system to the door. This is not default like that, but it's just two hollowed out magnets that hug each other like so. And that makes it so I can pull back that inner mesh door. And then down somewhere by my feet, I've got my clothes bag in case I wake up and need to put layers on. Raincoat, empty stuff sacks and stuff. You can see here too that I do have that footprint tucked underneath where I'll be sleeping to help protect, protect the tent floor. All right, let's do the food bag. So I've got my back panel out of my backpack. Gives me a nice spot to sit. I wouldn't be doing this this close to my tent, but since I'm already filming here, got my food bag here. Of course, this would be full of food, right? It's not. So I have my bear kit, which I would use whenever I can. I've tipped over, when I was through hiking the Appalachian Trail, I've tipped over two of my dinners and wasted food and water, and I have no interest in doing that, especially in areas that are drier than I'm used to, so I'm going to bring this stand. It's very lightweight, it's actually steel, pretty heavy duty. So a little bit about my system. Clean up kit, you know, we talked about that. I don't want this to blow away, so I'm gonna put these aside. I prefer for this particular tall pot, the long handled spork. Um, one of my luxury items that I've brought in almost all my other through hikes was a titanium cup, the 600 milliliter one. And I would I liked it for doing like hot drinks in the morning. So when it's got water in it, it's nice and stable up on this because of the stand. I can use it for hot drinks in the morning. It's a one liter size, so I can also cook just about anything in it. One thing I found that works really nice is most of the food sits at the bottom. So you can hold up kind of high and the hot food doesn't tend to burn your hand or you have handles. This gets way down into the bottom corners. If you're not familiar with the Vargo bots, what's kind of unique about them is they have a threaded lid with a seal. So if I needed to in an emergency or, or even if I just felt like I wanted extra water, I can fill this with one liter of water. And close it shut and it is watertight. So that allows me to carry an extra liter of water if I need to. That also allows this pot, which is about five ounces, to be used for cold soaking, something I have never done before but plan to try to do a bit more on this particular trip, at least have the option to, and of course good old-fashioned cooking. So that is my food kit. All right let's move on to talk about my water system. So I, I plan to keep the sport cap smart water bottle on my right hand side so I can use that as my primary drinking one. As of right now, again, I'm going to adapt as I go, but I, I hope to most of the time try to keep this one clean when I can as well, just so I can quickly do a quick change over and have my filter more water out, out on the trail I'm moving. And what I've been used to for the last few years is using a gravity setup. And I also wanted a big three liter bladder for carrying water for the long carries. But with the simple addition of this carabiner clip in this cord, I can very easily hang it up, right? A little bonus tip, I can even take the cap from my water bottle and then kind of click it into place on that carabiner so I don't lose it. This coupler works so I can not only use clean water to back flush my filter when I need to, I can also hook this coupler up to a spigot at like a hostel or something like a garden hose spigot. I can use the pressure from the hose to help flush gunk out that way too. But in addition to all that, you can 
and screw that firmly onto here. To get it to filter and gravity, you do need to have a little bit of an air gap. The filter is brand new. I did knock off my cap. But let's check that out real quick. All right, well, we're filtering. Here's some dog action. The 10 tent site, the next one is yard. And here we go. So with it, something as simple as that very lightweight cord, lightweight carabine, storing the cap. And you can see it's filtering pretty fast. I'd, I'd say it only takes, I, granted it's brand new filter in, in house tap water, so it's not exactly gunky, but it'll do that later in, I don't know, probably 90 seconds to two minutes under perfectly clean circumstances. So I just love being able to set this up, then go set up that tent and do all that stuff with pad and plate and getting ready because I can come over and switch this over to the other bottle and do all that kind of passively. So that really works for me. Fun bonus fact for you. These Luz are the fourth fastest species of dog. very fast. All right, let me take you inside and show you what I've got going on in there. Also very good retrievers. So here we go, I'm getting ready for pretend bed, even though it's noon. Taking off the shoes and the gaiters. They don't come inside with me because they're usually disgusting. All right, so shoes. They can get tucked out of the way in that nice huge vestibule there. I do stake it out with one of those little carbon stakes. I have access to stuff in my pack right here if I need it. Take off my gaiters, show you around. Ditty bag, mouth guard would go there. I usually fall asleep in wearing a hat and not in the hood and only put the hood of the mummy bag on if I'm very cold. Rain jacket, only if there's a chance of rain. Here's how my sleeping system works. Super cush pillow, like love it. Here's the pad strap, so that wants to stay in place. Spin it around. If you haven't checked out any videos on the Durston X mids, I have a review of this tent, so check that out if you're interested. It's a great tent, lots of them. Um, yeah, down here, usually clothes, empty bags for packing up in the morning. It's a little too warm to really want to be touching the sleeping bag, especially in the tent. Bonus dog footage. And so to show you Hello, pad strap. One other thing I do is I put my foam piece, that's the back panel for my pack, and also my sit pad for breaks during the day and for eating. But I put that underneath the center of my torso for a tiny bit of extra warmth, tiny bit of extra pad poppage protection, since that's where the majority of my weight will be. And also because that foam between the slippery floor of the tent and the pad acts as like really grippy material. It helps prevent this from sliding around quite as bad. Most of that sliding is actually the tent on the ground sheet. So you're going to have to just kind of take my word for it so it's sticking to the pad. It does stick. There you go. Here's my tour. So I hope that helps. That's the equipment that I've got that I've chose to start this trip with on. I might play around with a little bit of how I send myself things for the San Juans and Colorado, depending on the snowpack and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna play that one step by step as I go. Um, 
I'm, I'm pretty happy with all of this. I kept my weight pretty light. There is a link to my lighter packs in the description of this video. And I do have reviews on some of this other stuff as well as a bunch of other tents that I own on my channel as well. So if this is the kind of stuff that you're interested in, definitely feel free to check that out. Thanks for watching.